All right, hello, people. Uh, welcome back to another uh, deck list video. Um, I know it's been a while since I've given one, and part of that is just because I did not have the capital to finance another video like this. But recently, I acquired said capital, and where I am able to finish my new Shadal build. Um, it's fairly simple, fairly straightforward. It is a definitely a go second OTK kind of build, um, you know, sort of focused on breaking boards, but not really to that much of an extent. There's not really a whole lot of board breaking you can do. Your entire end goal is really just to put enough bodies and damage on board to kill your opponent, which is why you have some of these cards here that I am showcasing as examples, which we will get to why I have chosen them as we get to those cards. So with that said, let's just jump into the deck list. As with all Shadal deck lists, we have a lineup of Shadal monsters. I think I run a very standard cookie cutter ratio for my Shadal monsters. I run two beasts, two dragons, two squamata, two Hedgehog, and two Falco. Now, some people may disagree with these ratios. Some people might drop one dragon and throw in an extra Squamata, and that's perfectly reasonable. I can see the reason why you would want to do that. Maybe drop a Falco or something like that. Um, a lot of There are a lot of deck lists out there where people are running three Squamata, and that does make sense, because Squamata, when pitched to Graveyard will pitch any of your other Shadal cards to the graveyard. I did a little bit of testing with that, and I have found that the problem with running a different ratio than this is that you end up running out of Shadal's Shadal effects to get off. You know, um, you end up sending one too many of one Shadal, or you, you know, you just don't have that fifth one to activate, uh, even if it doesn't, you know, typically work or whatever, you know. You know, sometimes you've sent everything else, and now the only thing you have left to send is nothing, because you've already sent all, the, your, all of your Shadals and activated their effects already. Now, that will not be as big a problem when the Structure Deck comes out, because we will have more Shadal main deck monsters and more effects to activate. They are lackluster effects, don't get me wrong. They're not anything, you know, totally amazing, but they're, they're what, they are what we will have. And they will fix that problem in itself. But as it stands now, two of each, I think, is the best way to go about it. If you find that you're not consistently getting to the Shadal monster you want to get to, you are not going to break my heart if you bump Squamata up to three. But this, as it stands right now, is your best ratio for the main deck Shadal monsters. Um, as for our non-Shadal monsters, as this is a quote-unquote pure Shadal build, we run three Nibiru. Nibiru, for obvious reasons in the main deck, um, you're either going to see it in your hand and it's not going to do anything, or you're going to see it in your hand and it's going to blow out your opponent. There is really no in-between. Um, and even then, he is a light monster, which is why I decided to run him as a hand trap over a couple of other things. These will stop entire boards of monsters, given that your opponent doesn't make the right thing when they make it. So just keep that in mind. The other card we run a we run for our lights are two Blackluster Soldier Envoy of the Beginning. You could bump this up to three. There are a couple of other options in this deck that you could take out and run this at three, which would be totally reasonable and not the worst thing in the world to do because this deck is kind of all about dumping light and dark monsters into the graveyard so that you can summon these guys. But yes, two Envoy of the Beginning, just an all-around excellent card to run. Uh, if you can find room for three, you are more than welcome to run it at three. I find it a little too bricky, so I only run it at two. We can use him to make uh, Daybreaker, which is the one of the Link Twos I have decided to run. One of the other Links that are that are going, the Link Twos that are going to be better to run with this deck, you can drop this for something that won't burn you for a thousand or something along those lines. But you know, sending him to grave, getting another body on board—that's the reason we run him. Or, or another light monster if you don't like taking that thousand points of damage. Whatever works for you. 
We have three Earth targets, and they are, of course, Mathematicians. Mathematician is the best normal summon in the deck. It is the only real normal summon in the deck. Um, then this card is another card that you can switch out for other options, but I run three Ash Blossom. This slot of three monsters should really be anything that shares an attribute with your fusion. Um, for ex like for example, running Mathematician, you could run even if you don't run Check, but this card really need whatever card you put in these slots really needs to match the attribute of the fusion you're running. So in my case, I am running El Shadal Grista. So I need a fire monster to be able to summon it. Just guaranteed. Um, if you wanted to run Anoya Tillis, I would recommend Gamma Seal. But since I run Shek, I run Ash Blossoms, and they will clog up your opponent a little bit. They will slow them down just a touch. There's a lot of searching that goes on with meta decks these days. So... You know, these cards will go off. Will they stop your opponent completely? Most likely not. Um, you just have to know which cards to hit and what you're playing against so that you can hit the cards that you need to hit with it. But that is it for our monster lineup. Now we will go into our spells, which is also pretty basic. Three Shadal fusions and three El Shadal fusions. Um, they, they are the archetypal fusion spells. They are somewhat searchable. Um, if you get the flip effect off of Hedgehog or another combo that I will show, show you here in a minute, but they each serve a different purpose. The unfortunate problem is that this card can get ashed. Even if you're not searching from the deck, your opponent can still ash Shadal Fusion. But Archetypal Fusions, we only have the two, so you want to run six. Speaking of fusions being run at three, we run three Super Poly. All of our fusions are... Omni fusions, like the Omni heroes in, like the Omni heroes, uh, they are one Shadal plus one card of another attribute. So no matter what your opponent is playing, if you have a Shadal on board and you, you have a Super Poly, you can get rid of it, and there's nothing they can do about it. We also run as a pseudo play extender slash starter slash board outer um, instant fusions. This card will start the game for you if this is what you've opened up with. This could be the first card you play in the turn, and it wouldn't be all that bad of a thing. Part of our extra deck is built around this, though, so it does make it a little cloggy. Our extra deck is a little crowded, so to speak. But otherwise, this card is has just come in clutch. Next, uh, because we can get hand traps so much, we of course run three called by the grave. This uh, option was brought up to me by one of my viewers on my stream who was trying to build Shadals, and I helped her out with it. I completely forgot that this was a card when I built the deck, but it is definitely a card that belongs in the deck. Yes, Called by the Grave, run it, hand traps, kill this deck. Please don't not run this. It will help you, and it will save your skin. Uh, the only other mandatory card in the deck is Foolish Burial. Please run Foolish Burial. It is a free extra mathematician, essentially, that doesn't require your normal summon. Now, these last two slots are also debatable. First of all is a Monster Reborn. This could be really any play extender. If you want, it could be a second Trick Clown. If you want, it could be your third Squamata, whatever you want. Put something in this slot that'll extend your plays, that'll make it easier for you to get to where you need to get to. I have, all, I have found that Monster Reborn just happens to be that card. And my last tech choice is one Shadal Core. Now, this is a trap card. You're not going to use it as a trap card. Uh, it is a very crappy trap card if you play it as a trap card, but there is a specific combo that you do with this in conjunction with your other Shadals in order to search fusions that you don't already have. Now on to the extra deck where we have all of our boss monsters. We of course run three El Shadal constructs. Construct is the boss monster. It was forbidden and then limited for a reason. Uh, because this deck was just too popular that if they didn't kill this card, then the deck would continue to see play, so they had to kill, unfortunately, they had to kill Construct. It's just an all-around solid card. You need to run this at three. Do not run it at any less, because you will make three in more duels than I can imagine. As for our other Stahl fusions, I run one Shekinaga. Shek is the only real negate that you have in terms of negating card effects. It's 
decent if this is the only thing you can make. You can put her in defense position and sit on her fat butt. She will help you live. Next, we have our one Grista. Uh, I run Grista because Apalooza is too expensive. Otherwise, I probably would be running Apaloozas and my Ash Blossoms might be Gamma Seals. Then, of course, we run to Wenda. Uh, Wenda is a fantastic floodgate, especially if you time it properly. If you have a Super Poly or a El Shadal Fusion, you can, in fact, uh, if you've timed the effect correctly, you can have your opponent waste their one special summon, and this will lock them out of the game to an extent. She's also one of our instant fusion targets. The extra deck has too many cards in it to justify running her at three, but at two is the optimal ratio. Um, we have two f Super Poly fusions. We have one Mud Dragon and one Starving Venom. And then for our last instant fusion target, we have a Thousand Eyes Restrict. He will take a monster and eat it, and then you can link him away into something which is fantastic. He can remove a monster and then become a good material. For our link monsters, we run, of course, Boral Sword Dragon, uh, the OTK machine. He will, in fact, kill your opponent for you. Um, really, one of the best boards you can end on on turn two before the battle phase is Boral Sword plus El, El Shadal Construct because this will get you enough damage on board to kill your opponent. As for the Link 2s, we have Daybreaker, the Shining Magical Warrior, Beat Cop from the Underworld, and Shadal Construct. Now, these two just happen to be what I think are the best Link 2s with these arrows. As for Shadal Construct, this is kind of just in here because it's a Shadal deck. She works really well with Shadals when you can summon her. The problem with her is that her materials make her almost impossible to summon. And for our last extra deck monster, we have one Link Karibo, which you can only really make off of Thousand Eyes Restrict. So now I'm going to show you the combo that justifies running the one Shadal core. As a trap card, it is very bad, but it has one specific purpose if you run one specific combo. You just need to have one of your fusion spells, specifically Shadal Squamata or access to it, and one of your light monsters. Preferably, of course, Perform Age, but any of them will do. So what you'll want to do, let's say you have Shadal Fusion, and you activate it. You activate your Shadal Fusion, you send Squamata, and it doesn't matter which, so we'll just say BLS in this case, to the graveyard, to Fusion Summon, El Shadal Construct. In this case, what you'll want to do is activate Squamata and Construct's effects. At the same time, send Shadal Core, and in this case, El Shadal Fusion. Or one of the Shadal Fusions that you haven't used this turn if you used Super Poly or something else. What will happen then, Core's effect will activate and add that fusion spell to your hand, giving you another fusion summon in the turn. Unfortunately, that's one of the only ways we really have to search our fusion spells. But that is it for the video. Uh, that is it for the deck profile. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I hope you guys will like, comment, subscribe, ring the notification bell, share this with your friends if they're also into similar Yu-Gi-Oh! content. Um, you know, it really helps, supports the channel, and it'll get you more notifications when I make more content. Uh, right now, I've got a playthrough of Stardust Accelerator that's up and kind of catching some steam. Not as much as I would have hoped, but it's what I have that I can post, and it's what I am currently playing through. It's just a compilation of my stream highlights. Speaking of which, there's a link below to my Twitch channel, where I will stream Stardust Accelerator when I need more footage, or YGO Pro more common often than not. Uh, there are other things that I'll play if you guys express interest, and you can express interest to me either through my Twitter, you can DM me something because I have such a small base right now, I'll respond to pretty much anything, you could leave a suggestion in the comments, uh, or you could join my Discord, which there is also a link in the description where you will have even more direct access to me and more of my fans. So if you guys want something like that, you are more than welcome to join. Um, Follow those links, push all those buttons, etc., etc. But that is really it for the video. I will see you guys in the next one. Adios.